Today we are diving into SSH or Secure Shell. Yes, that is all it is. I always think there's something to the H, but it is apparently the H in Shell. So that's it. Anyways, uh, SSH or Secure Shell is an essential tool for secure remote access and management of systems. SSH is the backbone of secure communication for system administrators, developers, and its professionals worldwide. By the end of this presentation, you will have hopefully gained a comprehensive understanding of SSH and its importance to how it works and its best practices for its use. SSH is a cryptographic network protocol that enables secure communication between two network devices. It was created by Tatu Lonin, I think. Think I pronounced it correctly. I apologize for when it turns out that I horribly mispronounced and butchered that last name, and probably the first name too. Anyways, it was created by them in 1995 as a secure alternative to older unencrypted protocols like Telnet and RSH, which was Remote Shell. Once again, yes, that is all. The H doesn't stand for anything. Just like SSH, I triple, quadruple, quintuple check this. The H is nothing, except for the H in the shell. Don't go searching for the H for several hours like I did. SSH is primarily used for remote command line access to systems, secure file transfers, telling network connections, executing remote commands, and managing network infrastructure. It operates on port. 22 by default and provides strong encryption and authentication mechanisms to protect against various types of cyber attacks, including eavesdropping, man in the middle attacks, IP spoofing, and manipulation of data in transit. The current version, SSH 2, or just SSH 2, the dash is completely unnecessary. I don't know why I said it. Uh, it was adopted as a standard by the Internet Engineering Task Force, the IETF. Look at that. They actually use every letter. Yay. In 2006, and offers significant improvements over the original SSH1 protocol. Time to see how it works. Don't quote me on any of this. This is probably my hardest topic in cybersecurity. Okay. The SSH connection process involves several key steps, including client initiation, where the SSH client initiates a connection to the SSH server. I just got thrown through a loop of how many times I said client initiation and initiation. Uh, anyways, uh, next is server authentication. The server sends its public key to the client. The client verifies it against the known hosts to ensure it's connecting to the intended server. Then there's key exchange. The client and server agree on session keys using secure key exchange algorithm, typically Diffie, Diffie Hellman. I'm going to pronounce a lot of things wrong. I, I'm sorry for what I have already mispronounced and what I will mispronounce. Um, moving on. User authentication. The client authenticates the server. Authenticates to the server. I need to fix that in post. Uh, no, I won't. It won't make sense if I keep this in, if I fix that. Uh, typically, using either a password or SSH keys. You will see a password more often than SSH keys because SSH is more secure but more complicated and convoluted and complex. No, I'm obviously words uh, to use. And finally, there is the encrypted session where once everything is nice and authenticated, then all oh, fewer, fewer, further communication is encrypted and used in the agreed upon session keys. Essentially, once you're good, you're good. Okay. SSH uses... I said that way too fast. SSH uses a combination of symmetric and asymmetric encryption to provide security. Asymmetric encryption used during the initial key exchange. It's slower, but allows secure communication with a without a pre-shared key. Symmetric encryption used for the bulk of the communication after its initial handshake 
It's faster and more efficient for ongoing data transfer. And then hashing. This is used to verify the integrity of messages, ensuring they haven't been tampered with in transit. I don't know why I didn't include hashing in the prologue statement. In the first statement, I should have. I didn't. I won't add it. It wouldn't make sense to keep this in, and I don't need to re-record. All these slides have been recorded, like, over 20 times, so... Words going with whatever their final thing is, because it's going to keep happening. I'm capping everything off at 20. Quality of the recording of each slide will be different. So, sorry. The SSH protocol consists of three major components. Transport layer protocol, which is responsible for server, server, server authentication, confidentiality, and integrity. User authentication protocol, which handles client authentication to the server. Connection protocol, which manages the encrypted tunnel allowing multiple logical communication channels. Time to move on to SSH keys. That feels robotic, so I'm just gonna yammer. Okay, next. SSH keys are a pair of cryptographic keys that can be used to authenticate to... Should have taken a breath before this. To authenticate to an SSH server as an alternative to password-based logins, a key pair consists of a public key that is copied to the SSH servers, anyone can see this key, and a private key that remains only with the user. This key must be kept secret. This key must be kept secret because otherwise it, well, it defeats the point of it being a private key if it's not a secret. Okay, so as you can see, there's an example in here. There will be more examples. We're going to see if I do all of them. I'll do this one. We'll see how it goes. I might read more. I might not read more. There's one page with a bunch. I won't be reading all of them because it's a lot. We'll be rehashing this when it comes to that page, slide, whatever. Anyways, to generate an SSH key pair, you can use the SSH-keygen command which is ssh-keygen-t rsa-b4096-c and then whatever your email is. Uh, this creates a 4096-bit rsa key pair. The public key is typically stored in tilde slash tilde is just wherever you are, so it's going to be uh, uh, da, 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 whatever your your login is. So for me, Sam, it'll be Sam. And just say Sam. That's all I have my login as. Um. So yeah, whatever your login is when you sign into your computer, that's what it'll be. So whenever I say tilde, it's I'll explain it, but it's probably going to be that when it comes to the beginning of a pathway. Uh, anyway, so tilde slash dot SSH slash ID underscore RSA dash dot pub. While the private key is in tilde slash dot SSH dash ID underscore RSA. It is very important to not confuse these, as I learned in uh, virtual machines with uh, Amazon Web Services. It's also very important to remember to turn off your Amazon Web Service. Otherwise, you will be charged a lot. I almost didn't. Luckily, I got an email. Make sure you turn off your virtual machine when you're tethered into Amazon Web Services. It is not a cheap feature. Key-based authentication offers several advantages over passwords. It increases security, so there's no need to transmit passwords over the network. It increases convenience, so there's no need to type password. And it and has increased automation capabilities for scripts and applications. There are different types of SSH keys, including RSA, which is the most common, DSA, which is older and less secure, 
ECDSA, which is Elliptic Curve Digital Signature Algorithm. I don't know why SSH is like the only thing in the world where they don't use... I'm sure there's other, but it feels like the only thing I can think of that doesn't use every letter as a unique thing. And then ED25519, which is a modern, secure, and performant. Now it is time to move on to SSH commands and usage. This is where the thing with a lot of commands is. So Probably won't read it all. I'll read what they do. I won't read the command. You'll see. There it is. Lots of examples. No need to make this any longer than it needs to be. Uh, so we're just going to get right into it. So time to look into some common SSH commands and their usage. First of all, we have connecting to a remote server. Pause here if you want to read it for some reason. Connecting with a specific private key. Again, pause here if you want to read it. Or just pause. Actually, I'm not going to say pause here. I'll make a pause. I'll take a pause after each one. For you to pause and read it. I'm not going to say pause. It makes too much time. Uh, so then we have copying files securely with SCP. Recursive directory copy with SCP. Local port forwarding. Remote port forwarding. Running a command on a remote server without logging in. Using SSH as a SOX proxy. Okay, next slide. Now for SSH config files. File. Mm. Okay, next. The SSH config file tilde slash dot SSH slash config allows you to specify custom settings for or different SSH connections. This can greatly simplify your SSH usage. Here's an example. I'm not reading it. You can read it. I'll read it. Okay. Host my server. Host name 192.168.1.100. User admin port 2222. Identity file tilde slash dot SSH slash my server underscore key host server alive interval 60 with this config you can simply type ssh my server instead of ssh dash i or l i can never remember even after typing that i think it, i'm pretty sure it's i once again don't don't quote me on any of this. This is my hardest topic in cybersecurity. So, if you need a source, don't use me. I can get. You, I definitely have enough understanding of this to get you a passing grade. But if you want to try and ace something or do exemplary, this is not the place to do it. This is the place where you can learn. It hopefully be a little entertaining. And I yammer on for way too long. Anyways, uh, where was I? Oh, yeah, where you can type SSH my server instead of SSH dash I tilde slash dot SSH dash my server underscore key dash P two 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 admin at one nine two dot one six eight dot one dot one hundred. Just to clarify for anyone. If I type it out, I can autopilot on and just know if it's an I or an L. I can't do it. I don't mess up with this when I'm typing it in. It's just when I'm reading it, I can never tell. Oh, wait, no, it, it's an I because I just realized I'm using an all cap font. So that would be that would have an L if that were an L. OK, so it is an I. I knew it. I knew it was an I. I think I've been going on too long. Time for the next slide. Time for the, not the, some best practices. Some practices. I'm not going to claim these are the best. It just makes it look more formal for SSH security. Next slide. To ensure the security of your SSH connections, use strong, unique passwords or preferably SSH keys. Although a D 
decently secure password will do just as well. Uh, keep your SSH client and server software up to date. Disable root login and use sudo for administrative tasks. Use non-standard ports to reduce automated attacks. So it's usually on port 22 if I remember correctly. That was like 15 minutes ago. Use like port 7, 13, 4. Shake it up. It's surprisingly easy to be secure. Don't be lazy. Because oftentimes during the lazy setup, you can just type one letter or number off and increase your security tenfold. Anyways, next, implement fail to ban to protect against brute force attacks. Use key-based authentication instead of passwords. Limit user access with allow users or allow groups. Essentially use a whitelist. Don't use a blacklist. Whitelists are always going to be more secure because a whitelist will... Make, it, blacklist has it so that you choose after and everyone normally has access whereas whitelists will have it so that initially no one has access and only people on there that you have vetted and know and you can trust will have access to it which is why it is always safer to use whatever is the equivalent of a whitelist over the equivalent of a blacklist anyways next uh use ssh protocol version 2 this kind of goes into point two Keep your stuff up to date. Don't use outdated stuff, and you'll be more secure. Disable unused authentication methods. Use SSH agent forwarding cautiously. Make that clear. Be cautious. Always be cautious. Everything you do, be cautious. If it has important, sensitive, confidential credentials, information, any of that kind of information, always be cautious. Regularly audit and rotate SSH keys and use SSH certificates for large-scale deployments. Moving on to some common SSH issues and troubleshooting. Yeah, so it feels robotic to just do that. So we're going to have random talk after each tile because it feels too robotic. Some common SSH issues include connection refused. Where, so you will want to check if the SSH server is running and if the port is open. Permission denied, so ensure you have the correct credentials and key permissions, and you're allowed in if you are a guest and not a host. Make sure that you have yourself on the group or the whitelist. Uh, host key verification failed. The server's host key has changed. Investigate before proceeding. Basically, if you know the server personally, not the server, the host, of the server personally this issue can usually just be solved with a quick text email and it's solved and you're done um a slow connection this is pretty self-explanatory it is you have a slow connection your connection is poor move to a different room or get an ethernet cable to, anyways moving on to troubleshoot Use the dash V flag for verbose output. So SSH dash V username at remote host. Moving on to the future of SSH. Since I'm going to say everything after each one, uh, bouncing back slide uh, verbose. That was a fun word. Don't get to use that much. Similar to anomalocaris. That's another fun one. If you don't believe me, say it out loud. Trust me. It's fun. Good time. SSH continues to evolve with new features and improvements. Uh, there's integration with hardware security keys such as YubiKey. Uh, improved performance with new ciphers and key exchange methods. Enhanced support for IoT and cloud environments. And quantum resistant algorithms to prepare for future threats. 
As cybersecurity threats evolve, SSH will remain a critical tool in maintaining secure communications and system management. Moving on to the conclusion. Everyone's favorite part of the presentation when you are not watching the presentation for fun. SSH is a powerful and versatile tool that provides secure access to remote systems. Its robust encryption and flexible authentication options make it an in indispensable part of modern IT infrastructure. By following best practices and staying informed about new developments, you can ensure that your SSH usage remains secure and efficient. That concludes my presentation.